Hi, boys and girls. Today, we are doing science again. And I have a question for you. Did you know that all animals seek safety to survive? Let's see what we can learn about snails, praying mantises, and gophers. And let's observe different animal behavior in the video entitled, How Can You Find Animals in the Woods? Hi, it's Doug. Whenever I get the chance to visit a forest, I love to look for animals. Things like toads and newts and bugs. Once, I even found a baby owl staring at me from up in a tree. Have you ever tried to look for animals? They can be kind of hard to find. My friends are always telling me that they like to go on hikes with me because I'm pretty good at finding animals. But you can be good at it too. I can let you in on a few of my secrets, some tricks that I have to help me find them. If you were with me on the last mystery, we wondered, why do woodpeckers peck wood? And we saw a few different animals on a walk, all of them working to find food. So let's go for another walk today. And this time, I'll give you some tricks so that you can go out and find animals too. Now, one of my favorite tricks is to look under things whether it's under a nice damp log, or even just under some leaves. There are some animals that stay under these things because they prefer to stay nice and wet or moist and not get dried out by the sun. Oh, look under that leaf. See there? That's an animal. Do you know what this is? Look, there's another one over here. It's a snail. It has a shell on its back, and its eyes are up here at the end of those long stalks. You might notice a little black dot on each end. If I try to get really close to a snail though, and I touch it, watch what it does. Oh, you see that? What did the snail do? Why do you think it did that? Think about it. Why does this nail move when someone touches it? Well, let's see what the video has to say. In today's activity, you're going to use your imagination. You're going to pretend that you're a snail. You're going to curl up in your shell and then stretch out to explore. You'll look around with eyes on the ends of your eye stalks. And when you see something that scares you, you're going to do what a snail does when it gets scared. My friend Pat will show you what to do, step by step. Pretend you're a snail. Most of your body is in your shell, so curl up like a snail in a shell. You'll have to imagine the shell. Did you do it? Curl up like a snail, a shell, a snail in a shell. Okay. Reach out from your shell. Stretch out your eye stalks. Look all around. Once you've tried this, go to the next step. Look out. Here comes something that scares you. Pull back into your shell. Try this one time, then go to the next step. Did you try it? Let's do it one last time. Reach out from your shell and look all around. When you see something scary, pull back. Okay. Good job. Go ahead and have a seat. Let's see what other animals we can find in the forest. Watch the next video. Now you know one trick for finding animals. Look under things like logs and leaves. But what else can you do? Let's keep going on our walk. I'll let you in on another trick for finding animals. Every once in a while, as you're walking along, stop. Look all around. What you want to look for 
is any kind of movement. Like, look at the leaves of plants. Do you see anything moving here? Ah, I see something. Do you see it? It's that right there. That's something moving. It's some kind of insect. Here's another one. It's, do you know what this is? It's called a praying mantis. These are some of the biggest insects you can find near you. They might be as big as your hand. Now, these bugs can bite. I don't recommend getting your hand near their mouth. It might really pinch, but they don't have teeth and they're not dangerous. You can reach your hand out to try to touch one. Watch what happens when someone does. Oh, wow. Here's another video. Wow, what did the praying mantis just do? Can you think of any reason why it might do this? What was your idea? Okay. When someone touches a praying mantis, why does it do what it does? Did you come up with an idea? Okay, let's keep moving on. It's time to use your imagination again. You're going to pretend that you're a praying mantis. Do what a praying mantis does when it gets scared. My friend Pat will show you what to do step by step. Stand up and find a spot where you have space to move. Are you in a good spot? Pretend you're a praying mantis. Stand like this and be very still. It's kind of like freezing. Someone tries to poke at you. Practice stretching up tall and spreading out your arms. Look big and fierce. Did you practice that? That's kind of fun. Looking big and fierce. Okay, let's see what else. Let's do it one more time. Stand very still. Watch for the finger coming to poke you. Then look big and fierce. That's what a praying mantis does. Uh -huh. You were fierce. Okay, go ahead and have a seat. Let's see what other animals we can find in the forest. I've been giving you some tricks for finding animals, like looking under logs or looking for movement, such as bugs walking on leaves. But what else can you do? Let's keep going on our walk. I've got another trick to show you. You don't see any animals here, do you? But here's one trick for finding them. Look along the ground as you walk. Have you ever been walking along? and you see a hole in the ground like this, there's probably an animal in there. Now this doesn't work every time, but if you carry some seeds with you, like some sunflower seeds that I have here, leave a few sitting right outside the hole like this. Then back away and be very still and watch. Sometimes if you wait very patiently and quietly and just watch, you see that? This little creature is called a gopher. It lives underground in a hole. You might even have one in a hole in your yard or in a nearby park. Now, did you see what it was doing? It comes out and grabs a seat, but then it hurries back into its hole. And then it comes out, grabs another seat, and then hurries back into its hole. Why do you think it's doing that? That is a good question. Is it afraid? Is it hiding its food? What did you come up with? Now, 
you're going to use your imagination again. You're going to pretend that you're a gopher. You're in your gopher hole,、pretend. and you know someone has left seeds outside. You want to eat them, but you're scared of people. So you're going to do what a scared gopher does when there are seeds outside its hole. My friend Pat will show you what to do, step by step. Stand up and find a spot where you have space to move. Pretend you're a gopher in a gopher hole. Down in your hole like this. No one can see you when you're down in your hole. When you're in your gopher hole, go to the next step. There are seeds outside your hole. Do what the gopher does. Come out and get one seed, just one. Then go back in your hole. Imagine you've crouched down in your gopher hole, looking out. Do you hear that? A person is walking by. Are you scared? Crouch down in your hole. Go to the next slide, and we'll play a game. Look and listen for danger. Whenever you think it's safe, come out of your hole and get a seat. Are you ready? Go. Are you hiding from the dog? Get a seed real fast. What do we have here? I was hiding. Now I'm coming. Get a seed. Get a seed. Go back and hide. <laughs> Great job! Go to the next slide. Whew. It's hard work being a gopher. I hope you got a lot of seeds. Now let's sit down and watch the next video. Today, on our walk through a forest, we saw three different animals: a snail, a praying mantis, and a gopher. We didn't see the animals just sitting there, though. All the animals had some kind of special behavior. They had ways they were acting. Look again at what the snail was doing, and the praying mantis, and the gopher. All of them are behaving in different ways. But is there anything that's similar in how they're behaving? What do their behaviors have in common? Think about it. How are they alike, and how are they different? What's similar about the same? What's the same about the way they're all acting? These animals we've seen today each had special ways they were acting. The snail tucked into its shell. The praying mantis stuck out its front legs and looked fierce. And the gopher would quickly go back into its hole after grabbing a seed. Even though these are all different behaviors, there's something that they have in common. There's a pattern or something similar. All of the animals were trying to stay safe from me. Look, the snail only tucked into its shell when I got close to it. If I backed away, then it would come out again. See, the praying mantis didn't hide from me. Instead, it tried to look big and fierce when I got close to it, as if to say, "You don't want to mess with me. I'm big and scary." But when I backed away, then it went back to what it was doing as normal. The praying mantis was trying to stay safe by trying to scare me away. And then there was the little gopher. Notice how the gopher would poke its head out to grab seeds, 
But then once it saw me, it would quickly duck back into its hole to stay safe. Now, if you ever notice animals doing things like this, you might wonder, why are they trying to stay safe from me? I'm not going to eat them. The animals don't know that, though, especially if you're bigger than they are. They're scared when they see you. All these animals were trying to stay safe from danger. Just like animals need to find food, they also need to find safety from danger. It's one of the things animals need to survive. By the way, that's one reason why it can be hard to find animals when you go out on a walk. Many animals are scared of us and hide, so you have to learn tricks, like to look under things, or leave seeds outside a hole and be very still, or look for movement in the trees. I hope you'll go for a walk and use some of these tricks to find animals yourself. You might see different animals depending on where you live, but you can start finding animals right away. And as long as the weather's warm enough, if you look under a log, in most places, you can almost always find little creatures like this called pill bugs. See if you can find out what they do to stay safe from danger. Stay curious and see you next mystery. Okay, boys and girls. Now you're going to get out your science packet. And it'll be science mystery number three. You will draw a picture of an animal staying safe. And that's how it should look. All right. See you next time. Have fun drawing your animal staying safe.